Hi everyone, welcome to Grace and Truth Church Online. My name is Apostolos and I'm one of the pastors here at Grace and Truth Church. And for all you dads out there, Happy Father's Day! We just like to thank you for all the amazing things that you do for your family. And we just like to let you, let you know that you have our deepest gratitude and appreciation. But of course, there's another father that we need to thank today. And that is our Father in Heaven. And so that is what we're going to do today. We're going to worship our Father in Heaven. Pastor Frank is going to deliver a special Father's Day message to us. And if your dad happens to be in the house with you, why not invite him over to watch it with you to celebrate this Father's Day? Or if you are a dad, why not invite your children to watch it with you? This is one of those days where they, have, they cannot say no to you. But first, let us start this Father's Day by worshipping our Father in Heaven through worship and song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Worship His holy name. 
Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. May all glory and honor be given to you. For you are a good and perfect Father who is holy, righteous, and awesome in all your ways. You are the creator and Lord of all things. May your kingdom come. May all bow down before you. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us as your children to live in a way that pleases and glorifies you. Thank you for giving us our daily bread. You are our good shepherd who gives us all we need so that we are never in want or in lack of anything. Thank you for forgiving all our sins by sending your son Jesus to die in the cross for us and help us to forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, particularly during this time of trial and tribulation. For yours is the kingdom and power forever and ever. And we pray that today's service will give you pleasure and that you will have a wonderful Father's Day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And we wish all the fathers today have a very, very happy Father's Day. Now on Father's Day, we're thinking of what a father would do or should do to his children. Now today, I'm going to uh, share with you through Psalm 23, the first four verses, and, that, and see, find out what it says that a father would do to their children. Firstly, I'd like to have Apostle uh, to read this four verse. Psalm 23, verses 1 to 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As a father, so we have a very important role to lead our family, to educate our children and to support our, our family and in particular to add and to support our children. Then, so as, as a father, we have a different role. Firstly, we have the role of supplying the need of our family, supplying the need of our children. The Psalm 23 verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means I lack nothing. I have enough my daily need. All my daily necessity will be satisfied. Because uh, as we understand, uh, the Father's role is to put bread and butter on the table, which means uh, the bread and butter is just an, an inclusive uh, term to, for the, all the daily necessities. And of course, we need to have dwelling, we, have need, we need to have transport, we need to have clothing, and all that sort of thing. And uh, we fathers love to do that, and we, uh, because that is the divine appointment uh, that the, the God has given us, that God ordained us as a father uh, to bless our children, to bless our family. So, uh, just like what the Lord teaches us in uh, in the gospel, it, uh, in the, the Lord's prayer, and he, he taught us to say, ask the Father to give us this day and our daily bread. Now, that daily bread means that they are all the necessities of the day that we need. And secondly, a father 
need to be a, a protector to our family, in particular to our children. Uh, we, we love to do that. Yes, and yes, and we say, and, and in verse 4 it says very clear, Oh yes, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, uh, the psalmist David, uh, King David, had this great experience because when he, during his his, uh, his life journey, he had a lot of hardships and, and uh, uh, difficulties and very dangerous uh, situations and in particular one of which was that uh, when he was fighting the Philistine and, uh, and, and the, the battle was, was very, very serious, very severe and he fought for a long time and uh, he was tired. It was when he was tired and just, just on that particular moment, one of the valiant soldiers of the Philistine was just about to kill him. He was just in a split second. God, God raised up his, um, his, his general uh, to, to, get, to come in to his aid and, and kill this, this um, uh, Philistine soldier in a split second and that saved his life. So David knows what what is to be walked through the valley of death or the valley of shadow of death the God was because God was with him and God saved him. God knows what he is experiencing. So God saved him at the very moment that he need that need. And just think about that is only a split second. A split second and the Lord saved him from death. Now we all have this um, our, our experience. I think I say very, very often uh, as we drive in a split second, we could, we could engage in an, a traffic accident, but suddenly uh, the Lord just, just remind you or just move your hand to twist, to, 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 to turn the, your, your steering wheel a little bit, a little, little space that will avoid a collision. Uh, I have this experience um, quite many times. I'm so thankful, uh, thankful for that and thank God for always saving me from trouble from uh, from this dangerous situation and secondly uh, as a father that is a protector we protect our children the God wants us as a father to protect them from any harm from any any uh, lacking of support just as it, uh, just as John in the book of John 10 it says now Jesus says very clear and the, the, the apostle John record what he he said, uh, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In those days, in 2000 years ago, then in the Middle East, they were the nomadic people. They were, they were shepherding sheep. And so we can always find that Jesus was depicting, was depicted uh, as a as a shepherd, uh, holding a little ram, a little lamb in, in her in his bosom, and holding a, a, a shepherd's staff in his hand. That sort of thing. And Jesus said, "I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd will wills uh, willing to die for his sheep." Now, so this is a figurative speaking that he in fact. He died for us because we are to our Lord is a sheep, is a sheep. So he died for us and so that we can be saved. And, um, there is a picture, as, uh, as you can see on the screen now, uh, our father's role is just like, it's just like this. There's a, there's, a, there's a cliff there and the father would just put, a, put himself over the cliff so that his children will walk, walk over him to the other side or to the future or to the better, better position. That's, that's the kind of thing we father uh, would love to do and should do. Okay, and there is a story in Thailand. There was a, a farmer or living in a, in a wilderness, so to speak, a little very poor village. And when he, after he got married, and after and then the, 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 the child was born, and not long before his child, his child was born, uh, his dear wife 
died through of uh, or sickness. And then he he re loved this child, this child by himself, and he he determined to educate him or to support him through the education step, uh, through say primary school, uh, secondary school, and then up to uni. But uh, as, he, as he was striving every day to find money to support his son through these educational steps and finally after he graduated from the high school then when he got into a university and they had no more money so he had to sell his house and then and use all this money uh, to support him to to go to the big city and, and to study uh, in the university. He himself was living in a very poor condition in the village. And by the end of the day, I will thank God for this story's ending. And the, his son was really appreciated his, what his fathers did. Then he he did work hard, he studied hard, and he, he got his degree. And he eventually went back home and went to make his his father was so proud of his son. So and this picture was shared on the internet and, and many people were moved. Many people were so touched by this story. This yes, this is what a father would do to educate his child. And secondly, the father also leads leads his children, leads his family. And where just like uh, the Proverbs uh, 20, uh, 29, 18, it says very clear, give us a clear direction that where there is no vision, the people perish. People perish. Perish is in a sense of we have no future. Because when we don't when we don't have any vision, we don't have any clear direction, we don't know where to go. As a children, as a child, we grow up when we when we come into this world just like a a, a blank white paper without without nothing, without knowledge, without knowing anything at all. So he he or she would like to learn from the, from their father. So the father is very important to lead him to to the Lord, to teach him or her to the Lord. That's most important. That direction is is the fundamental direction that that the father should give to his children. This direction, not just like the. The verse 3 of this psalm it says that, that, that he gives us new life to his soul. He leads the way of righteousness because of his name. Meaning that God leads us to the righteous right, to his righteous. He leads us to go to walk this right way. This way is walking toward him, walking toward to fear him, so that he, the Lord, will be with us. In the, so that the Lord will bless us, to bless all those who wish to, to be guided by the Lord. So this starts from the Father. The Father is very important to take their children to the Lord. Now, uh, you, you, you could uh, have, uh, I don't know whether you heard about the gangsters. The gang members, in particular, we're, doing, we're talking about in, the, uh, in the America. Uh, some people, can, the general uh, understanding could be the gang members or they are from the very poor family without education and all that. Uh, we think that uh, that is the true case. But in fact, it is not. Many, many of the gang members were from the well-to-do family. And then you say, why? How could that happen? They have money, they have all the supplies and support, and they have uh, all the education. So why do they fall into the trap of the gangsters? That because the father, many of the fathers, they are absentee in the family. They are busy working and trying to win the world and trying to earn a lot of money. And they thought only, only when they have the money to give to the family, to support the family. And that's enough to be a father. That's enough to do the role of a father. But in fact, it is not enough. Because the 
child without a father to be with them, they they do not have direction. They will they would love to. They're yearning for to to be led by somebody. Uh, uh, ideally, is from the father. But when the father is not present, he was going to sort of seek something. The gangsters will try to get this opportunity to influence uh, those those uh, children, uh, and then uh, they will su support them. They will they will they will give them money. They will help them. They will give them friends, so to speak. And then the children thought this is the right leader. So that's why they fall into the trap of the gangsters and become the gang members. So first, it's very important that we are to lead them to, the, to God. We are to lead them to the kingdom of righteousness. See, just like what Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, 33, he told us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be yours as well all these things means all the things that we need uh, will, will come to us they're very important that means all the things we need not we not all the things we want because want is, is a greed the need is our daily necessity the Lord knows about that and the Lord says don't worry about that when you see you do my kingdom first do your kingdom do, do what his kingdom wants first the which means what he says which means what he values if we we values if we put him first and put his value first all those daily necessity that he will give it to us okay now as a father how can we be sure that we can we we get we are on the right track of leading our children this this is the thing that when joshua was wondering how to to do the right thing. When Moses uh, was uh, uh, reached 120 years old and the Lord just took him away and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Mount Nebo, and, uh, and then now the Lord says, Hey Joshua, now that Moses has gone, and now I want you to lead my people into Canaan. Now you are to do that. And Joshua, I think. Uh, Joshua must be praying uh, to God. He uh, must be praying and saying, Lord, I don't know. I'm frightened because I've never been this experience. In the past, uh, so many years, the past 40 years, I've been, I've been following Moses. I've been just assisting what, what he do, uh, what he did. I'm just, uh, just was told what, what was to do. That's all. I, d I never thought about this. I never ex ex experienced. But the Lord says, don't worry. Just, just it says in uh, the book of Joshua one day, it says, do not just do not let the book of the Lord depart from your mouth. And just meditate on this day and night, and so that you may be careful to do what is written in it, so that then you will be prosperous and successful. And so these two magic words that's all we long for, isn't it? Everyone, every father wants to be prosperous. Every father wants to be successful. So that we can support our family, so that we can supply our family, and so that we can protect our family. So we're very important, we need them. But, but before we thinking about leading the family, we go to the Lord first and ask for the Lord for direction. We ask for the Lord for all the get all the guidance, the, all the correct ways. And so, so uh, brothers and sisters, all oh, fathers, oh, we we must do this. And when we lead them to the Lord, and we will be a happy father. That is the true, the true thing. And I think everyone, every successful father will tell you this secret. Now I know the person, I know a man who is now 50 something years old and he, he had children, he, he had children and now children married and they had they finished their education, they had a decent jobs or careers or whatever it is and then and they are also married and their spouses also, also uh, uh, got godly Christian and they, all of them are fervently serving the Lord in the church. See, this is the picture. This is the picture every father wants. 
Every father wants this to happen to their children. I think this is the God-given special job for every father to fulfill this. The God wants us to do that. Now, question is, how to lead them? How to lead them? Let me start with our everyday, everyday morning devotion. We put ourselves into the hand of our Lord. We also pray for our children, pray for the day. We, we start with daily devotion. And, and then through when we do that, our study in the, in the Bible, our reading in the Bible, when there is a particular verse that struck you, uh, that strikes you, you write it down and you create a, a kind of a memory card and put this card into your pocket and then you take it out and recite it again and again. Now, okay, say like, uh, uh, people will say, I'm very busy, I don't have time. And then I can ask you one question. What do you do when you go to the toilet? When you go to the toilet, you have five minutes. So you might have five minutes, you might have seven minutes, you might have three minutes, you might have ten minutes. Okay, what do you do? You, 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 you are you watching whatever it is in your iPhone. You can watch all the, the uh, YouTube on iPhone. Don't spend, don't waste the time. <coughs> That's the most important seven minutes or five minutes. During, during which time you can recite all your memory words. Don't you multiply your time. When you, when you ride the train to work, what do you do? You can have an hour, you got 20 minutes or you might have an hour. Okay, what can you do? You can do a lot of things. Other than resting, do you take your memory card out and you recite it and before long you will be a semi-expert of the word of the Lord. And then that's how you, you can allow God to lead you, uh, to guide you into how to lead your children to the correct direction. So let the word of the Lord dwell in you richly in all wisdom. As Paul says in Colossians 3.16. So in all wisdom, we use all methods, all ways possible to try to uh, try to memorize the word of God. And so that we put into our reservoir that when we need them, the Holy Spirit will guide, will, will, will draw it out to help us, to let, to let us know. Just like Isaiah, Isaiah says very clear, the Holy Spirit behind you will say to you, this is the right way, walk on to it. So that is important that, that we have the Word of God inside ourselves first. Then when time comes, the Holy Spirit will go to our reservoir and throw it out and help us and speak to us. Now, and finally, the Lord wants us to teach our children. Now, in verse 4, it says, Woman, you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Like, how do you want your child to be, to grow up, to, to be, to grow up to be? Uh, how do you want your child grow up to be? You ask, you this, ask yourself this question. Well, it's very helpful uh, that you have a picture of how your child could be. That, that, that helps you uh, to, to get into the right direction. There is one person in the 1875, uh, that's a Richard, Richard Ductile, who did a research or uh, a research of two prominent persons in the 18th century. They are, that is uh, Jonathan Abbott and also Max Duke. Uh, in, in the 18th century, these two completely opposite persons. Well, Jonathan Abbott, as we already would understand, would appreciate, he was a great evangelist, a great revivaler. Uh, he led a great revival in the 18th century. And then there was a great man, he was a great theologian. And, and guess what? His descendants. Uh, this, um, this person who studied all these descendants, uh, he studied seven, 729 of his de descendants. That, that comes the, the statistic. 
And then the figure show, shows us they have, they, all these descendants, they have one vice, vice president of the United States and three U.S. senators and three college presidents and then three, 30 judges, 60 doctors, 60 authors, uh, 65 professors and 60, uh, 75 uh, military officers and 80 public servants, 100 lawyers and 100 pastors and so on. Now see, this is a brilliant, brilliant uh, sort of uh, chain of descendants. This is a brilliant result. So uh, I praise God for Jonathan Edward who devote himself to the Lord of God. See, then, then all his descendants uh, sort of... Uh, um, Become, uh, become the really uh, positive influence of the society. Where is the other one, Max Jug? Uh, Max Jug, uh, the, 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 he did he did the survey of his uh, 1,026 uh, descendants. It becomes it, it, the result is just so distressing. Look at seven murderers, hundred plus drunkards, hundred fifty criminals, hundred eighty, hundred ninety prostitutes, and three hundred ten. Die as a pauper. As a pauper so it means die in property, which means they do not have enough means to live by. See, this is a big difference. So it's a, the main thing hinges on how you educate them. Now, so, okay, talking about education. The Lord wants us to, to be with our child, to spend time with our child, to invest time for this very important. Because the Lord invests time with us, because He is with us. As Jesus' name means Emmanuel, God with us. Although now Jesus has been uh, 2,000 years ago, he's been ascended and resurrected and ascended and go to heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. But he sends his Holy Spirit to be with us. So, brothers and sisters of fathers, we must spend time with our, with our family members. Well, one of which that you could, you could do is to form a, a family altar every week. Which means uh, you spare one hour, one hour a week. Uh, might be on the weekend, well, on Saturday, well, everyone can, it can be easier to allocate that one particular hour. And during which you worship, uh, you share, and you pray for each other, and most importantly, as the father, you have to prepare the message to share with your family. And that way, uh, that way, before long, uh, you 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 find your children be really, really in depth into the walking walking uh, in the Lord's direction. And also another thing uh, that you might be might be good to you. So. Uh, is that uh, every day after dinner time, after dinner time you do not pack up all the dishes uh, straight away and just leave it there and for, for 15, 15 minutes, say 10, 15 minutes, we just have casual chit chat. No, and, 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 and when you create that sort of atmosphere, when your children get used to it, when your children feel comfortable, and, uh, and they will, guess what? They will share with you what they, what they, what's happening in their school. And this day, this day and age, you don't know what's happening in the school. You know, have you heard about, heard about a school there are drugs involved? Have you heard about there are homosexual, there are homosexual people? There are you talk talking about all sorts of uh, family issues and, and uh, the fightings and all that sort of thing. Um, you need to know because when they, when they tell you then, then, then you understand. Then you can uh, from time to time skillfully sort of guide them into the right direction, skillfully point it out to them. And, uh, and so, so that way they will learn subconsciously, they will learn without knowing. So that way, without pressure, so that they can learn, in, in, we teach them bit by bit every single day. So that way, uh, in an atmosphere, there is no pressure and they will learn the most. I encourage you to try and, and to do that. And 
for, and then importantly, to be a teacher, to be a father. I, I would suggest one thing, is that uh, uh, you open, be open to your children, to your family. What it means be open. In this day and age, the technology is so advanced, uh, that everyone gets into computer, everyone gets into mobile phones, and in the mobile phone, the computer, they can go to any site they want. Uh, any site they can get any message they want. Uh, okay, now all those messages, if we get into the wrong message for long, uh, we will be affected by the wrong message and we, become, we will become someone that we don't want them to be. So, we will do, uh, instead of do, do, doing this, how to prevent this? And we can say to them, we say, look, my computer, the password of my computer is such such, my phone's, my phone's password is such and such. And we encourage them to do so. What does it mean? That means that, oh, well, I do not have anything to hide. And lie to shoot you. Uh, that way, that will you know, give them some kind of impression that, oh, uh, I might look into their computer. I welcome them to look into my computer. And that way, so that way just, uh, just, just helping them to safeguard themselves. So that, uh, so to, just to draw their, their awareness draw their attention to the, the, the negative messages in the internet and so forth. And that way it could help. So, and the other thing is that as a father, we must keep our promise to our children. Very important. If we, if we say on Friday after, uh, on Friday after school, uh, I will take you to football, and then you better do it. No matter, no matter or on that day, or unless the, there is a, no way that you can come a bit earlier to do that, uh, then, then you explain it very clearly and, and, and do it at a time. But make sure what you say will be fulfilled. And which means, and, and also the which means that if you know that you can't do it, you don't say anything. All right. And so once you, when you said it, you try to do it with all your might. And that way, win the trust. And that way, very important. And lastly, when we teach our, teach our children, oh, sometimes and from time to time, they may do wrong. They might be, um, they might be deliberately, or maybe they are uh, they sort of negligent and they're a bit of mischievous. Then we need to have some guideline. We need to have just like verse forty says, your rod, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Now the rod and staff is the, the rod of the of the shepherd. The rod of shepherd is to sort of uh, to guide the sheep. When the sheep walk walk sideways, uh, and then the, the the shepherd will use that uh, the rod now to sort of uh, take them take them back to the take them back to the to the group. So the the shepherd will use all means to guide to protect his sheep. So should we as fathers, if our children, uh, their, their behavior is having very uh, occasional um, uh, mischievous, then we need to discipline them in a way that, uh, that, that can help them and also, uh, also um, can guide them in the right direction. As Ephesians 6 4, it says, give us a guideline when, when we discipline our children. It says very clear, your fathers do not make your children angry, uh, which means do not discourage your children, uh, so, but giving them training in the teaching and fear of the Lord. So all our teaching, all our, our discipline must be according to the Lord's guideline. And that way, that way our children won't be discouraged. So it's very important, just like what our Lord says in John 13, 15. The Lord says, I've given you an example, so you may do what I have done to you. So as, as fathers we do to our children, we, we model to our children. We, we do that and we show him. We, we be a role model to them. And so that, so that we teach them with who we are, not what we say. All right, brothers, uh, fathers, 
I know, to just uh, wish you all fathers uh, were a successful father. Now today we have shared in Psalm 20, uh, 23 these four verses that the father has four, four roles. That one is the supplier, one is the protector, uh, that we supply our family with daily need and also we protect them uh, from any harm. And the second, uh, second role is that we are a leader. So we have to lead our children to seek the Lord's kingdom first. And thirdly, we are a teacher. Whereas a teacher, we must invest time with our children. We teach them, we teach them by, not by word, but also by deed as well. But by what we are, not by what we say. Okay, now fathers, I wish you a very happy Father's Day and I hope that uh, this sharing can help you and help me and so that we all grow together in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you all. Make sure you have the bread ready and a glass of juice, preferably a red juice, but if you don't have red juice, you can just use water or any other kind of juice. And if you haven't got these elements ready yet, I'll give you a few moments to pause this video to get them ready. Alright, let us now 
have the communion together. Today is Father's Day, and it is appropriate that we should do communion on Father's Day, because we not only have an earthly father, we have a father in heaven as well, a heavenly father who loved us so dearly that he gave up his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. So as we commemorate our earthly fathers this Father's Day, let us not forget to commemorate our Father in heaven as well. And what is one of the ways that we celebrate Father's Day? By having a family meal with our dad, isn't it? I know with my dad, nothing gives him more pleasure than having all his children gathered around the family table to have a meal with him. And that is what communion is about. It is having a family meal with our Heavenly Father, with all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Communion symbolizes and looks forward to the great heavenly banquet that God has prepared for us in heaven for those who are His children. So, as we celebrate Father's Day today, let us remember and thank our Heavenly Father for all that He has done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. How about we all now just take a few moments to reflect on how good our Heavenly Father has been to us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being such a good Father towards us. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for providing for all our needs every day. Everything we have comes from you. Thank you for always being there for us, for being faithful even when we are not faithful. Thank you for always working for our good and doing what is best for us. Thank you for your never changing love towards us, even when we fail. We thank you that when we were dead in our sins, you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for us so that our sins can be forgiven and we can be delivered from the curse of death. We can never comprehend just how much it costed you to save us, but we just want to thank you today for your amazing love towards us. We just want to give you all the praise and honour that you deserve. And we just want to say that we are grateful that we have you as our Father. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, broke it, saying, This is my body. Eat it in remembrance of me. Let us now eat the bread that symbolizes the body of Christ that was broken for us at the cross. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's let us now drink the cup that represents the uh, blood that Jesus Christ shed at the cross for us. And let us 
look forward with eager anticipation for the day when we can drink this cup once again with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Let us drink the cup. Well, that concludes our service for today. We hope that you've been touched by God in some way. But please, don't go away just yet. We'd love to hear from you. Pop us a message on Facebook or YouTube. And if you've liked what you've heard today, don't forget to click the uh, thumbs up icon and also the subscribe button. That way you will be kept up to date with all our latest videos. And also thank you to all those of you who have been faithfully supporting the ministry of this church through your finances. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. And if you would like to do a church offering today to support the Ministry of Grace and Truth Church, the details will be in the following slide. Well, that's it from me today. Enjoy the rest of Father's Day and see you next Sunday.